This is the Steel Mastery Renaissance Gambeson as advertised on their website. It's historically accurate and well featured. There's a range of custom features. I paid for leather arming points, maximum padding, metal buttons, and a linen lining and outer. I've owned this jacket for almost a year and a half, so it's well broken in and very flexible. It's easy to put on and moves well. I asked Steel Mastery to extend the jacket beyond the hips for better protection. They extended it very generously without charge. The low collar is an advantage when wearing the PBT throat protection since there's no additional layer to insulate heat. You can see it is fitted to the body, tapering at the waist. It doesn't lift much when I raise my arms, but it would lift even less if I used a belt. The gambeson was tailor-made to my body's measurements, and as a result it fits me extremely well. It's very comfortable to wear. This is a very popular pair of gloves sold by Federarm. The Gambeson sleeves are a little thick, so the gloves fit snugly. As you can see, they need some gentle encouragement to fit over the top of the sleeves. The gloves' cuffs are a little narrow. The linen fabric is softer and far less stiff than typical HEMA jacket material. The immediate advantage of this is comfort when moving. Over the last two years I've also worn a Neyman standard jacket and a PBT 800 Newton jacket. This jacket is more flexible than both of them. The historical design of this jacket does have its disadvantages. There's no overlap of fabric over the front, providing less protection. The leather arming points do need to be tied before combat, or they will end up getting tangled. Although the jacket's flexible padding provides very good mobility, it is more easily compressible than a standard HEMA jacket. Consequently, the jacket does not provide the same level of impact protection as a Spess Axel Peterson PBT 800 Newton or Neyman Heavy. The buttoned front is vulnerable to blades entering from the side, which I have experienced more than once though very infrequently. However, I have to say that having worn both this gambeson and modern jackets from Neyman and PBT, I miss the mobility this offers. Unlike heavier modern jackets, this gambeson doesn't resist my movements very much at all, though at the cost of protection. The Neyman Bazubans provide an excellent level of arm and elbow protection with extremely low bulk and very high mobility. As you can see, however, they don't play well with the fader arm gloves. Putting the gloves over the bazzy bands isn't much better.
The name and thoughts fit very well over the sleeves of this gamberson. The short, broad hourglass cuff ensures there's no interference. I had difficulty launching Underhaar from the left, but this is due to the Thox colliding with each other, not resistance from the Gamberson. Launching Underhaar from the right is no problem at all. The arms and shoulders don't bunch up when I lift my arms, so I remain unrestricted in high guards such as ox, with good visibility. The name and Basu bands fit perfectly over the Gamerson sleeves without any interference at all. The forearm is covered from wrist to elbow, with the elbow particularly well protected. This is the best arm protection on the market. The Neyman Fox and Bazu bands fit very well together. This is an example of positive gear synergy. Good gear complementing good gear. Wearing the Fox and Bazu bands, I don't experience any significant restriction to my arm movement. I still have flexibility.
I can move into Ox and Zwerch without difficulty. Of course, I still need to improve my form, but that's not the fault of the gear. That Unterhaar from the left is still difficult, and that's due largely to the Thok's wide hourglass cuffs colliding with each other. Leaving aside the fact that my form needs improvement, I'm able to move very freely in this gambeson wearing the name of Thox and Bazubans. This is the Steel Mastery Padded Leather Pelerin, 55 euros. It provides very good shoulder and collarbone protection. It also covers my neck and lower jaw completely, providing an additional thick layer of protection over the top of the PBT gorget. The Pelerin stays out of the way during most movements, and I don't notice any restriction of my actions since it's so flexible. When I move into a high guard like Ox, I can feel the Pelerin lift and start to gather on my shoulder, or even press into my cheek. It doesn't restrict me unless my arms are too close to my head instead of further in front. I still find my mask to be far more restrictive in Ox. There's that really clumsy Unterhaar from the left again. I really need to do something about that. It didn't take long for me to start sweating. However, the cut of the gambeson kept most of the garment away from my body. Consequently, you can see the sweat pattern is concentrated on my chest, armpits and upper arm. A surprising amount of the garment is unmarked. The collar is low and my PBT throat protector absorbed most of the sweat. This is after sparring outside on a warmer day for about an hour. The sweat pattern is the same. The PBT throat protector absorbs sweat from my neck. The sweat pattern is quite visible from the outside of the gambeson since the perspiration moved through the filling to the external layer. This shows the linen fabric was doing its job. It was letting the perspiration pass through to the outside of the gambeson where it could evaporate. These close-ups of the period brass buttons also show how the buttonholes become worn and loose over time. This is a problem as the buttons can come undone during combat, opening the jacket and allowing a sword blade to enter. The sweat pattern on the back is quite distinct even on the outside of the gambeson. The white residue is salt and washes out completely. To solve the problem of loose buttonholes, I reinforced them with thick leatherworking thread. This made them narrower and stronger. The heavy thread stiffens the buttonholes and it is a lot more resistant to wear and tear than the original cotton thread. It's not pretty, but it works. I've also had to replace some of the original thread holding the buttons. First I used cotton thread, later I used the heavier leatherworking thread. You can see how the inside of the arm is chafed and worn after over a year of drilling and sparring, but it's still in very good condition. The cuffs show evidence of the same kind of wear, but none of the threads are loose.
The inside of the arm has held up well and the stitching on this high stress area remains intact. It isn't significantly discoloured by sweat either. Some of the stitching on this armpit has started to unravel however. Slight pilling and discoloration is visible on the gambeson's lower section. More chafing and wearing can be seen on other areas inside and outside the gambeson, but the stitching is solid and hasn't unravelled. The arms are bow shaped allowing excellent mobility when the elbow is bent. Some wearing can be seen in this high stress area. I haven't ever used the arming points since none of my armour requires them, but it's nice to have the option if I ever take up harness fechten. Again, despite some signs of wear, the gambeson is in excellent condition for 15 months of use and the stitching is still almost completely intact. Oh. 
The Gambeson and Pellerin fit very well with my gorget, spaulders with visages and gauntlets from Wolfland. The armour moves easily. In these images you can see how the Gambeson flares at the hips, providing high mobility when extending or bending at the waist. The armour doesn't weigh much, only around 4.7 kilograms, but it does inhibit movement and it contributes significantly to rapid heat buildup. After 15 months of use, I am very impressed with this gambeson. Wearing it for only a few hours a week, I only need to wash it once a month. I throw it in the washing machine on a regular cycle, take it out and let it air dry. Despite Taiwan's humidity, it has never grown mould. I attribute this to the linen inner and outer, which clearly helps the garment breathe very well, despite the thick padding. The linen can feel a little rough against the skin at first, and a rash guard is recommended. I'm used to it now though and just wear a t-shirt. I have to repeat how impressed I am with the stitching, which is very neat and accurate, and has stood up to many hours of high intensity sparring. Even here at the armpit, where the seams experience a lot of stress, there are only a few loose stitches. I just need to sew up this hole. There's only very minor pilling and discoloration at the lower end of the garment, mainly where it meets my waist. The shoulder seams are very well reinforced with two lines of stitching, so it's no surprise they're still completely intact after 15 months.
This is what the buttonholes looked like before I reinforced them with heavy leatherworking thread. They were starting to fray and loosen. However, the hem of the garment is only slightly worn and doesn't have a single stitch out of place. I used to wear the gambeson with Steel Mastery's padded chasses, and the brown discoloration was caused by the leather from my belt. The frayed buttonholes are partly the result of not wearing a belt, which increases stress on the buttons. Buckles or laces might have been better. I'm interested to see that after hours of use and many cycles of washing, the garment's colour hasn't faded much at all. It's still quite vibrant. I should reinforce the stitching around the armpits since it's likely to start pulling away eventually. At present though it's still intact. Steel Mastery provided excellent customer service. Communication was prompt and helpful, the garment was well tailored to my measurements. The flexibility and breathability are superior to my PBT 800 Newton jacket, durability is admirable and the value for money is excellent. The Gambeson has an authentic historical pattern and is well equipped for harness factor, complete with arming points. It provides easily enough protection for rapier, but I wear additional protection for the arms, collarbones and chest if using heavier weapons. This gambeson lacks an official Newton rating, so it probably isn't suitable for most tournaments. However, it's still an excellent HEMA jacket.